Hi, everyone. Hi. Jan, what is that instrument in back of you? A cello? Nice. Do you play? Is it your? Not plays, not me. Oh, cool. Nice. Is that a violin behind you? It is a violin. It's a, I have a violin behind me. My, 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 my son plays. Oh, I nice. Play I play the guitar, which is, oh, it's on my bed. I was like, where is it? Because <laughs> I was just, because I was just playing. That's what, what, what. Maybe it went outside. <laughs> yeah, I should go outside and play and make some money. Yeah. I live outside. <laughs> I live right near the park. So I could, you know. <laughs> Make some extra cash. Oh, I'm sorry, but this isn't about money. This is Watch Me Work. <laughs> hey. Um, this is Watch Me Work, everybody. We're here. It's Friday. This is um uh you know, we've been doing this two weeks in a row. Um, I'm gonna give the blurb. So this is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Lloyd Parks. Um we've been doing this show for 11 years. Not like this though. We've been doing it mostly in the lobby, live in the lobby of the public theater in New York City, where every week Usually on Mondays at five, I sit down with a whole bunch of artists and we talk about their work and their creative process. And the public theater has been a great supporter for 11 years of this show. And recently, uh, a couple of years ago, HowlRound joined us to live stream, help us live stream. And they are working together, HowlRound and the public theater to bring this incarnation of Watch Me Work to you and to me and help us keep it going now we're doing it five days a week because we are hardcore. <laughs> and when the going gets tough and when you have to stay inside, what else are we gonna do but, but get our work done? So um, we're here. Um, lots of thanks to Howl Round and the Public Theater. So what we do uh, in this, oh uh, yeah. So what we do in this, this is a show, it's a show. Um, it's a show where we create the action together by working together for 20 minutes. I'm sorry, I'm looking around because uh, I, was, I was playing the guitar and I left my timer on my bed. Um, but we create the action together by working together. Um, and then we create the dialogue together by you all asking me questions about your creative process. Okay, so we use the time at Watch Me Work to help you get your work done, to help you ask me questions about your creative process. We say that it's this show is just like Shakespeare in the park, except it's not Shakespeare and it's not in the park, but it is free and uh, it's open to all who are interested in participating. So uh, what else do we do? Well, one, one thing we won't be doing is we won't be asking you to read from the work that you've, you've been working on and me giving you specific uh, feedback on your work. This is more about talking about your artistic process not your artistic product. And while Audrey helps uh, tell us what else we need to know, I'm gonna run and get my timer. Go Audrey. <laughs> Hi everybody, happy Friday. It's wonderful to see all of your faces. Um, so um, so sorry, my partner is also on a call at the same time, so you might hear him as well. Um, but uh, the way that you can ask questions is that if you are in the Zoom, you can click on the participant button uh, and there's a button that says raise your hand in that tab. Um, I will see a little blue hand pop up on your face and I will call on you um, and I'll let you know when it unmute you when it's time to speak. Um, if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP, hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And you can also tweet at us at the Public Theater uh, Instagram and Twitter channels. And, and that's about it. All right. Okay. Got my timer. Aha. And um, we will we will begin. Uh, and then we will get on to the questions. Okay, so I'm going to start my timer. Ooh. Okay, ready? And eh.
Okay. Please. All right. We finished the uh, the work part, or not the work part. Yeah, we did finish the work part. Now we're going to do the talky part or the the dialogue part. We did the action. Now we're going to do the dialogue. Anybody with any questions about your work, or your creative process? Yep, we've got Zach with a question. Zach. Zach with a question. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, well, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Zach Avery. I'm a student at Aquinas College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm studying theater for social change. Uh, with my interest in writing and directing, I've made it my job to explore as many opportunities as I can in order to grow as a writer. So workshops like these are always really helpful. So thank you for doing this. Um, my question is, uh, when do you personally feel is the best time to share your work with others? I've oftentimes been so excited about a new idea for a story that I prematurely share it with my friends. And then once I say it out loud, I already begin to self critique and judge my own ideas. Uh, so what do you think? I love that you're thinking about that. Uh oh, it says I'm muted. Am I muted? I'm not muted. Um, I love that you're thinking about that. Um, How's Michigan? Are you in Michigan right now? I am in Michigan, yes. Okay. Uh, it, it's, doing, it's doing okay. We had snow yesterday, which is a little weird. Um, but uh, yeah, so Michigan's always crazy with weather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right on. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think your, your question's really great because, um, yeah, we spend a lot of time, you know, working on our projects, usually, you know, by ourselves pretty much. Um, and, uh, we get a few pages or 10 pages or however many pages or lines or whatever. And we so want to get, just share it with somebody to get, you know, a, a little pat on the back. Good job. Some encouragement, you know, um, mm -hmm. which is exactly why one of the reasons exactly why this sort of workshop or show or whatever we are, where this session we do, these sessions we do, I uh, talk about process. And not product uh -huh. because I think uh, yeah I'm I am I am relatively slow to share my work which doesn't mean that I don't want feedback from people but it does mean that I understand exactly what you're talking about you know I'm so if I get so eager for someone to say good job you know what I mean then yes. I'm doing a couple of things I'm putting my work usually out there before it's ready mm. right and I'm Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by Jay, Julie, and Christopher's background today, which I have exactly those cats from Ikea. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I, I put it out there before it's ready, right? And I don't allow myself to develop a very interesting muscle, which is, you know, one of those muscles, like sometimes you go to the gym or your yoga class and you go, oh, I didn't even know I had that muscle right? Mm. This is one of those muscles. Like we know about the tricep and the bicep and the, the character building and action building. We got all those things, right? But there's another muscle. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> it's the muscle of, of, I can pat myself on the back. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that muscle is, right? It's the something, anybody who knows Latin or whatever, you know, is a medical professional, um, you know, you know what I mean? So if you're always out there seeking approval from other people, is this good? Is this good? Right? You lose, you do not develop the ability to reflect appropriately on your own work, to give yourself a meaningful critique that's not just based on like the anxiety of, oh, darn, I should have done a rewrite before I brought it to my group or my friends, right? It's you develop patience, right? You develop the ability to uh, what we call in yoga svadhyaya, which is self-study. So you develop that reflective aspect that is very important to any uh, creative artist, right? Mm -hmm. So I wait a while. I wait a while. I write a draft and then maybe another draft, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I might share it with uh, early drafts or early pages with my significant other, my spouse, you know what I mean? But that's a very limited kind of, that's more like a, uh, like a, what do you call it, sounding board kind of relationship. You know, when your significant other, they know you so well, you know, but um, I'm very slow to, to show work to a, a wider audience. I do a lot of rewriting, writing and rewriting on my own. 
So if you have a, a tendency to, you know, you write it in the morning and then at night you bring it to your group or what, you know, or you write it and you, you know, you're always running in with pages to prove, look, I'm working and look, I, aren't I good? If you recognize that tendency or anybody, we recognize that tendency in ourselves, we can take a step back from that. Mm. Okay, and just take your time. Um, if your professors, you're in a, you said a writing, uh, you're in a, a, a program at Aquinas, if they ask you to, to bring in pages every week, that gets tricky because then you kind of have to, because that's the class mm. assignment. Um, you know, that is what it is. Uh, so, I mean, I, that's just a teaching model. Uh, it's not the way I teach, but some people find that way of, of, of teaching and, and very helpful, so. Hmm. Well, th thank you very much. That's great advice. Thank you very thank much. You. So I would say just hold back a little bit, right? It's like dating, you know, on the first date, the second date, the third date, you, well, maybe you do give it up, but I would say like, wait a minute, get to, you know, feel good about yourself. Sure, sure. Right, right. Don't be so, don't be needing to like, you know, jump in, you know, with the, with the, okay. Great. Develop those skills of patience, rewriting, learn how to encourage yourself, right, on your own. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Thanks, Zach. Um, all right. Next, we have a question from Julia. Julia, you gotcha. Hi. Um, I'm uh, in Canada at the moment, oh, hey. Montreal, and oh, yeah. I'm a theater student and a playwright and director. And um, I noticed that the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is, I guess, like PBS and NPR sort of smushed together, is offering an opportunity for playwrights to pitch a television idea. Um, just now during during the pandemic, uh, so that we have something to do, I guess. Um, and I'll, I do have mixed feelings about whether the play that I was supposed to produce in June um, that I'm not producing, obviously, whether it should be a television show, but that's for me to decide. I do think it's an excellent opportunity to um, to, the, to have someone read my pitch who would ordinarily not even read it. So I do maybe want to take this opportunity. I was wondering if you had any advice on how to write a log line or a one to two page summary um, for someone who has no idea what television people want or are looking for and has never even thought about television. It's good Friday people. That's a great question. What do television people want? <laughs> I work for television people and I don't know what they want. <laughs> they call me every day. And I still don't, I'm, some days I'm like, I've been working for you guys for a whole year on the same project and I still don't know what you want. Um, yeah. So I think it's great, Julia, that you're gonna take the opportunity. I think that's a sign of strength, you know? So congratulations for jumping in there and, and trying your hand at something that is new to you, even though you're, you know, an accomplished writer in other, in other forms. Um, I would say, is there, is there a show that your play is kind of like? Um, yes, that's a good question, actually. I mean, not to say that you're, you're, you're mimicking or anything that, that no, show. I'm just yeah. thinking of how, how might you go about describing that TV show? You know, okay. You see you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when we're, you know, sometimes I, I encourage people to like, if you, you know, your play is a lot like this play. So read those plays and see how that writer might've navigated it. Your song is a lot like that. So listen to that song, you know? Okay. Um, so that, that could be kind of a, a fun thing to do. Also, it's, it's a two page, it's a two page uh, treatment that they ask for. Uh, one to two pages. Yeah. One to two pages. Yeah. So again, again, tell, you want to tell yourself, Tell your reader the story very simply, right? Emphasize the, you know, big pictures, you know? Again, it's a visual medium. Um, I know there's a lot of visual elements in, in theater also, but, you know, think of, think, think of starting to see it as a TV show. Uh, a TV, um, yeah, a, a, what is it gonna be like a 30 minute show? I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of broadcasting. You guys do all stuff, right? Um, program, they, ask, series or? 
yeah, they ask you to choose if you think it should be a 30 or a 60. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh, okay. I guess the comedies are usually 30 and the okay, drops. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you think? Yours is going to be 30 minutes or 60 minutes? What do you think? Uh, 60, I think. Great, great. So also you can spend a lot of time. I don't know if you're uh, allowed to walk outside where you live, Montreal. I don't know what you guys are, you know. Uh, I walk outside very early in the morning with a mask on, but you know, as you walk around, imagine like, uh, I know it's not a movie. I know it would be a TV show, but it's gonna be on the screen. Imagine your play on the screen in the movie theater of your mind. You see? So turn the movie theater on, turn the, turn the movie on and watch your play. You see, try to imagine it as if it were a film. Go scene by scene by scene. Try to start thinking of it as a film. And then, whoops, that's Siri uh, talking to me for reasons that I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> um, but do, do, you, do you see what I mean? So yes. start imagining your play as if it were a film. Okay. Uh -huh. And then hit the big, the big tent poles, as I call them. You know, this is a this is a an, uh, this is a, a a teleplay about Badam uh, the character, you know, Julia, and she wants to get out of Montreal before Christmas uh, because she wants to go on a whatever a fishing boat to save the whales off the coast of Japan. I don't know. I'm making shit up, but you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's got her. You know, I mean, I I don't know, but think of the big story, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Julia. All right, so our next question is coming from Madison. Madison, are you there? Do we hear you, Madison? I don't see Madison. I don't hear them either. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next one. Okay. Um, all right, next we have MC. Are you there, MC? Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, MC. Hi. Um, so I think my question uh, goes kind of well with the conversation you and Zach were having. Um, I am a playwright and autobiographical solo performer in Chicago. Oh, cool. And the struggle that I've been having most recently is that I feel like I get so bogged down in one line or one moment uh, that I can't figure out how to solve. And I get very anxious and down about that. And I feel like I'm missing the forest for the trees a lot of the time. Um, so my question is uh, techniques that you have to develop that muscle of um, in mind, what about your work is good and worth it? That's a great question, MC. And I uh, get bogged down a lot and sort, you know? Um, one thing I do, yeah, there, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of techniques if you like, if you hit a wall. Um, one of my favorites is to just take out a highlighter, you know, if it's a, it's, if it's a piece of text you have and you're rewriting it, or it's a place in the, the performance piece that you're writing, am I on the right track of the kind of thing that you do, right? So yep. you're writing along and you hit a, like a wall, right? Sometimes I just put in really big letters, oh, I don't know what goes here, or I don't know really how to deal with this, or mm -hmm fuck this shit, I got to keep going, you know, so, something, you know what I mean? Because if you, so, some, it doesn't mean that you're, you're not dealing with it. It means that you're choosing to deal with it at another time. Okay. Yeah. Some people, sometimes people do free writing or exercises or all this stuff. But if you say you get kind of ensnared by these moments, then I would suggest maybe just take out a, you know, print it, if you're doing it on a piece of paper in your, in your notebook or wh wherever you work, I, sometimes I just circle it and go, I'll come back to this, you know, put a pin in it. I'll come back to this moment. I'll just keep going. You see what I'm saying? That works really well for me. There are numerous exercises you can 
sure, you can go for a walk and think about it. You can free write it out. You can um, think of 10 stupid ideas that might be useful to you, like 10 stupid ways to solve that. I don't know what the character does next. Let me think of 10 stupid things they might do next. They have to be stupid because you're lowering the bar and you're giving yourself permission not to be brilliant. Brilliant will come later. Brilliant comes, you know, after stupid sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but also one of my favorite things is I just, if I don't know how to solve something in a script or something I'm working on, I just keep going to the next thing. Something has to happen here. Character A has to interact in some way with character B and then character R has to come in and do something. I don't even know what, but I do know what happens three scenes from now. You know, does that, does that help at all? That's very helpful. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, because I, I don't want you to get ensnared, especially if you're doing solo work. You know, it can feel some, sometimes kind of a lot, you know? You want to feel like you can keep moving, mm -hmm. you know? Okay? And keep coming back here. We can keep checking in. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We are going to try and get Madison back on. She's chatted with me. Hold on one second. All right, Madison. You should be unmuted now. Hello. Hi. We did it. Hi. Hey, Madison. Yay. Hello. All right. Uh, hi. I'm Madison. I'm in, I'm in Queens, New York. Hey. Um, so... My question is about genre and tropes. So I'm working on a suspense piece, but I normally write comedy. Uh -huh. But I'm try so I'm trying. I decided to try something new because I feel like this is the best time to try something new. There you um, go. I'm tr uh, any tips you have for avoiding any genre tropes and um, like stereotypes that might go with some of the other some other genres like suspense and horror. I want to include a couple of of character tropes just because I'm a big horror movie fan and I kind of want to pay homage to that but I'm trying to avoid doing that and still sticking to like just character development and action development yeah yeah well that's a great great and I'm glad you're trying something new this is uh, as Madison said this is the perfect time to try something new um you want to write something that is in the form but not of the form too much Right. So you kind of yeah. want to do both. Like, I mean, I don't know any any stereotypes or tropes or anything that happen in the suspense genre. I, I, I don't know. Um, like like a horror film, like the black person always gets killed first. Is that yeah. Like like, like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, try like, yeah. Or like the trope that like lesbian, trope when a lesbian dies. That's kind of a common one. The trope of the lesbian dies and the, right. And yeah. the, right. Okay. So I, I get it. Okay. Okay. So let's not do either of those or any of those. <laughs> um, let's not do those. Um, but um, I mean, if you have a clear list of the things that you don't want to do, you might find yourself because you are writing in the form, doing some things that have, been done often before yeah do you know what i mean and that's okay i think the main thing is if you really ground yourself in your characters and make them really fun and, and for you and make them exciting to you then i think if you hit some of the well used you know tropes if you call them then oh well you know it's funny i was writing yeah. something recently and and there was an abusive husband a husband who was physically abusive to his wife and the producers came back and said, that's a trope. And I said, it's also reality. You know what that's I mean? That's actually so, kind of what I am struggling with as part of that type of thing. Yeah, so sometimes um, it, what's weird is that sometimes just the realities of life have become tropes. They're, they're often used, but they are true. And we can't simply eliminate them because they've been used often. You yeah. Know? It just. So I would say, gr again, ground yourself in your character. And if these often used moments surface and tend to happen, that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Just make awesome. it, fun. you know, it sounds like you're gonna have a great time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Madison. All right, um, next we have Rudy. Rudy, are you unmuted? Hello. Hey. 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 Dang, Hi. We got to me. That's so dope. I didn't think we were going to make it. Let's go. 
<laughs> um, hi, Miss Parks. Hello. Do you go to Yale, Rudy? I do. I'm at Yale. <laughs> How do we know? Because <laughs> I have a 1982 uh, vintage sweater that I found, or that actually a friend gave to me. I. Um, I do. I do have. Uh, I do go to school here um, for playwriting. Uh -huh. um, uh, it's my first year. Um, okay. Oh. Wow. That ended uh, earlier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so my question kind of actually uh, revolves around um, coming to school, right? So a little feedback um, or a little background. Um, like I, I'm a solo theater performer. Uh, dance theater artist and I've been creating solo dance theater work for the last like 15 plus years um, and then um, you know I was teaching down in Miami where I'm from and kind of was like okay what, what's like what's the next like step like what do I want to do and and so I never really had like the time and space to uh, uh, the time and space to give to like my writing as much as I wanted to. So that's why I applied for uh, grad school and I got in. And then I was like, damn, do, do I have anything else to write about? <laughs> like, I was like, am I done writing? Like, have I written everything that, that I'm supposed to write? Like I've written that mom piece with the brother, like I've written like, you know, and, and so there's like prompts that like we've been giving given during like class and um, workshops and and those kind of have been helpful um, sometimes but I'm just kind of like figuring out um, usually when I don't have anything to write I move around and dancing helps me and then I'm just like oh now I'm ready to write but I've been dancing for 25 years now and so like that also has kind of like ran its course and so I guess my my question is one have you ever felt like you have nothing else to write? And two, if so, how do you keep generating um, uh, the, the, the inspirations or the prompts or the, or the ideas where you're like, oh, okay, this is, this, is what, this is what's next, you know? Does that make sense? Am I ranting? Yeah, you, you, you're raving, actually. <laughs> No, no, no. You're, you're perfect, Rudy. You're perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, no, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times you get to the end of the road. You know, you've seen those those uh, signs, signs that say, you know, the sidewalk ends here. There was one online a couple of days ago. Sidewalk ends here. And the sidewalk came all the way up to it. And there was a sign. Yeah. Um, so you're, you know, or that book where the sidewalk ends written by, I forget who wrote Charles it. Silverstein? Yes, yes, yes. Silverstein. Yeah. Who's a who was a strange dude anyway who wrote a lot of children's books but yeah so your sidewalk so you're at the end of one of your sidewalks maybe and then you're looking around that doesn't mean it's the end of the end of your path it just means that maybe it's the end of your paved path right so now here we are in the wilderness rudy you know you're gonna have to walk around in the wilderness and maybe be lost for a day or two or a week or two where the old tools don't get you the results that they used to yeah um it's not a bad place to be it can be a confusing place to be it can be a an upsetting place or a less than comfortable place to be but i think um it sounds like you're there you're in a place of, of change you know uh i mean i was thinking the other day does the you know does the butterfly enjoy its time in the cocoon probably not right yeah probably not yeah they're in there going what the fuck yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> imagine it's all like oh they're a worm whatever i went i was worm i was minding my own business at caterpillar and then and then okay so you might be going through something like that um yeah. and again like Rilke real real says patience is, is everything you know patience keep working Keep, you know, keep uh, writing, keep dancing, keep moving, you know, doing your movement, keep up with your classes, keep, keep trying those prompts, you know? Yeah. You've written the mom play, the brother play. I mean, I, I gee, I, I, I didn't know they were, I mean, that's what you learn when you go to academic institutions. There are categories for these things. 
I had no idea the mom play the brother. Oh, I, I, I didn't either until then. Uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, you went to Yale, you go to Yale. Um, but well, yeah, I, I think it's very much that, that like the old tools that I've been using for so long are just like not uh, working for me mm -hmm. um, right now or, have, or, or in a bit. And so I guess I'm just, yeah, trying to figure out where these new tools are at that I can use to get to the forest and, and, or use to climb down or climb up or go the other way, even though I can't walk this way because the sidewalk just ended, you know? So just right. like trying to figure out where I can find those things and wondering if, yeah, yeah if you, if you, <laughs> where, where I might find, where well, I might find. Yeah, like, I think, I mean, I think w one of them is like coming to places like this and just hanging out with, people like us, you know, strangers. Yeah, a hundred strangers. Yeah, who are, yeah. I think we're more, yeah, we're, yeah, we're 104 strangers or something. Yeah, just hanging out like with a common, um, a, a common uncommon set of difficulties or interests, you know? Relaxing your mind, going for walks because Inspiration, Rudy, is all around you all the time. It's always there. You know, the spirit is always saying, hey, you have to show to the spirit, look, there's the hand of God. You have to just show, I'm willing to show up. Here I am. Because, because as you go forward in your career and you come out of your cocoon and you go forward in your career, there are gonna be more times like this, you know? Yeah. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to double down and say, spirit, I'm still here. I'm not only here when the going's good and the writing comes relatively easily, right? I'm, I'm here. I show up for you when the, when the going is, is a little rougher spirit, right? Gotcha. So just, you, you hang in there and try everything. Read, listen to music, watch movies, you know, read poetry. What kind of stuff do you not like to read? Um, actually, I've, I've, I've been reading all kinds of shit, like okay. because of the current situation, essays and novels and poetry, Great. And, Great. Yeah, more than, than I, probably reading I should have done during the semester, during the last two semesters. There you go. Well, so, you, so there you go, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just, just keep at it and keep coming here and keep, you know, being part of supportive communities that want you to succeed. Thank you. you know? You're welcome. Thank you, Rudy. Um, Okie dokie. Um, next, we have Saf. I'm saying that wrong, I think, but hold on, here we go. Are you unmuted, Saf? Oh. Hi. Hey. Yes, it's Saf. So, yeah, Saf. you said it right. Hey, Saf. Hello, everybody. I know there's a lot of people that can't say hey, but um, I'm just glad to be here. This is very different. I am in Georgia. I go to Kennesaw State, and this is my last semester, or last half, sem half semester, because, you know, we're all quarantined now. But, um, so my question was kind of, so our last little projects that we have to do, we have to write a 10-minute play. And I have an idea, and I've started writing, but I feel like it's slowly expanding because I have like so much I want to put into it. So my question is, how can I um, condense it without taking away all the love that I want to put into it? Question. Um, good question, Seth. It, um, how much, how many pages would a 10 minute play be, do you think? About 10 to 12, probably. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. How many class, have, I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how many have you written of the pages? I've written about five pages Great. and I feel like I have so much more. Great. That's well, okay. Right to the end of the 10, get to page 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. Right. And then see. You see what I mean? What you're okay. what you're yeah. doing is you're inhibiting, you're you're stopping yourself from writing by saying I have too much, it's not gonna fit. Right. Get to page 12. Do you know what happens at the end of your play, of your 10 minute play? Yes. Great, mm -hmm. great. So that's the last page, right? Yeah. 
and, and right to that. If you have big, oh my gosh, but I'm realizing that in the, in the, from page eight to page 10 is this epic battle scene where the hero, she gets on a dragon that she actually tames in the earlier scene and then she's right. in heaven and she talks to God and God's not there because God's on vacation. And then she comes back, to, <laughs> that, right? You can put it in the stage direction, right? And you can even put to be expanded when I make the play longer. But don't, mm, okay. yeah, uh, but don't let the, the, your belief that you're going to not fit it in stop you from writing. Because right now you haven't gotten there yet. You're only on page five, girl. So, right. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So don't, let's, I'll just be harsh. Don't use that as an excuse to keep you from getting done. Okay. 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 And you can always expand it later. True. Absolutely true. Thank you so much. You're for welcome so much. The advice. Thanks for the coming. energy, everything. Thanks. Glad thank to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It is 556. Um, so we have four minutes left and we'll do one more. All right. Naaman, I believe is how you pronounce this. Are you unmuted? Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Hi. Hey, what's hey, up, Susan? Naaman. Hey, uh, my question is, uh, so I'm a songwriter, originally a pop songwriter, and I'm transitioning into working on my first theater pieces. And so a lot of my time has been uh, just learning about the theater world and learning how to write scripts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But now since I'm working on the first drafts, uh, I want to know what are your thoughts on script formatting when writing the first drafts? Uh, should I stick to it as I go? Or maybe after I finish it, should I shape it up later? Um, mm -hmm. Because I feel like it slows down like my creative process as I'm going through it. But I also kind of want to adhere to, you know, some things that just make it easier for me when I actually start sharing this work. Great, great name. And, and again, great for you for trying something new. Very mm -hmm. cool, very cool. So um, I would say just in formatting, I would say just pick an easy format that you can, you write on a, a computer or a laptop. Yeah, on the computer. But okay, I'm great. also thinking about freehand too. I, I don't know, that's something about that that I'm feeling, yeah. Okay, okay. I would say, again, like with Saf, don't let the, the, the specifics of the form trip you up. You know what I'm saying? I think it's really important that you, if you're on the computer, pick an easy format that you can do like character name, colon, and then the, what they're saying, okay? Stage directions you can put in parentheses and just do that, okay? Cool. That's, that's readable, that's understandable for everybody who reads, who reads plays. Later on, you can use programs like Final Draft or all that that make, you know, that help it, that help you shape it into a, a more of a teleplay or a screenplay or a script format. But for right now, if you just wanna get it out, you know, um, are you doing freehand? You just write the character's name, dot, dot, and then what they're saying. And then any stage directions, you just write out in parentheses. Cool, that, cool. That'll be good enough. Yeah, and I also, you know, I asked because I got your script today. Oh, so there you go. Um, oh, yeah. well, th well, see, that's why we're talking about your work. And uh, yes, 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 yes. And now, yes. yeah, yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm like playing fast and loose with the rules. Um, <laughs> um, I'd like to do it in a certain, kind of way because to me I, I like that but yeah but if it's it's one of your early plays then then you can just yeah but enjoy top dog underdog thank you i will that's fine all right thank you thank you all right all right we got one minute we left we can do one more let's do one more great um we have got terry uh, terry are you ready oh i'm ready yay Hi from Gainesville, Florida, in the swamp. Hey, Terry. From the swamp. Um, I write uh, a lot of poetry, but right now I'm also doing some speculative fiction. Um, and I have a couple of uh, short stories that I'm compiling, but in the rewrite process, I have trouble um, ending it. <laughs> so I'll rewrite and do something else and come back and read through it and rewrite some more. And, you know, it's just that I, I have a trouble ending that process. Any recommendations? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a skill and you just have to learn uh, about how you can let go. 
And a couple of things, Terry, that um, it doesn't have to be perfect to show it to someone. We started this, this uh, session today talking about, we, we don't wanna send it out to our friends too early, right? Mm -hmm. But we also don't wanna hold on to it so long that no one ever gets to see it because we have to make it perfect. Okay. okay that's, that's like if you have a kid, you know, and they're 40 and you won't, you still want to mother them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's time to let go. Right. So at, at a certain point, the kid becomes however old they were going to become. The script develops in such a way that it's, you've done several rewrites on it. You've read it to yourself. You read it to maybe one or two close friends. You've gotten their feedback. You've thought about it. You fixed everything that you can see needs fixing. And then you, you can pass it on, you know, to other people to read. Okay. You see cool. what I mean? And yeah. It, and, and you don't have to, it doesn't, it does not need to be perfect. They say God is good, not God is perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Great. that's the path we follow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Okay. All right. It's 6.01. We've done it again. Um, week number two. Week, week number, number two. two. Um, as a reminder, all of the links for week number three are now up on publictheater.org. Um, you can sign up each day by 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, and I will send you the link between 3 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. Um, and we'll see you here next week. Happy Good Friday. Happy Easter. Those of you who celebrate that.